Hey guys, welcome back to Cindy's Culinary Corner. Thank you all for tuning in. Today I have a treat for you. I am going a little bit different, trying to go into my Thai inspired um, creative side. And we're going to be making a coconut ginger shrimp today. Now, um, the ingredients that we're going to be using, of course, some uh, pink shrimp. I have some shallots, garlic, half of a lime, salt, pepper, which are the bases of most of the dishes that I make. My favorite, favorite spice from Trader Joe's. It is called South African Smoke. It gives you a nice little smoky kick with a little bit of spice. We're going to be making our sauce with pomi tomato sauce and some coconut milk. Now, the reason why I use pomi tomato sauce, which is also one of my favorites, is because it's very, very low in sodium. So it allows you to control the amount of salt that you're putting in your food. And to give us a nice kick of flavor, we have basil and of course the ginger. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start off by adding some avocado oil to our pan. I already warmed this up. Looks like I turned it off, so. We're gonna get our pan to about a medium, medium heat. We're gonna add some oil. And we're gonna let that warm up. Now, as that oil starts to cool, I wanna go over the side dishes that we're going to be making for our coconut ginger shrimp. I already went ahead and boiled some potatoes. I partially cooked it so that we could just saute it, add our seasonings to it. It'll be a quick um, fix. And then we have some broccolini, one of my favorite vegetables. I went ahead and blanched it. I put it in some ice to stop the cooking. I'm gonna do the same thing that we're doing with the potatoes. We're just gonna go ahead and season it, saute it, add some shallots and some lemon to bring out the flavor of the broccolini. The very good thing about a gas stove is that it heats up rather quickly. So this is getting to about where I need it. I'm gonna go ahead and add my shallots and my ginger and my garlic. So we have the shallots, the garlic, and the ginger. So being that the um, garlic is already minced, you have to be very careful to not burn it. Um, so just keep moving it around in the pan so it doesn't stick. Make sure that you get your ginger on the heat because that's really what's gonna give us the ginger flavor to our ginger shrimp, right? So basically gonna cook this up for about like two to three minutes. I don't wanna brown the ginger, I just want to break up the fiber of the ginger to bring the flavor out. We'll let that go for a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add my pomi, my tomato sauce of choice to the pan. So I went ahead and brought the heat down low because I do not want to have to deal with this tomato sauce splattering everywhere. This is not a paintball field. I'm gonna just mix it in, bring it up. Warm it up for a bit and then I'm going to go ahead and add the coconut milk to it. 
the good thing about the tomato sauce and the coconut milk, they're both pretty thick liquids. So our sauce is gonna be pretty creamy. We can see that it's already starting to boil up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour in coconut milk. So that's one can of coconut milk. Stir that in. Look how pretty. Now y'all can't tell me that cooking is not art. Look at this. I would like to call this some type of abstract situation. It's, it's my abstract. Right. Make sure that you're breaking down the coconut because it does separate in the can. Very important to taste as you go, as everything is blending together. So let's see where we're at. We haven't added any salt yet. I like that, but it does need salt and pepper, but I like it. The coconut and the tomato go very well together. That's about it. I would say two teaspoons <laughs> of salt, but you're just gonna gradually add. I'm gonna add some pepper. And then my favorite <laughs> is a South African snake. Okay. So this is gonna add a, a little bit of smoky flavor and some spice. Give us the flavor profile that we're looking for. I think that's enough. You just gotta feel it, you know? You'll know when it's enough. I'm gonna bring the heat down. We're not trying to have burnt sauce. And you want everything to be able to incorporate well. Look how pretty. Yes. There we go. I hear my sauce. I don't think y'all can hear this. That's how you know it's thick, thick. Now, since we put spice in there, we want to try to balance it out. And we want to put some acid in there. So our acid for today is going to be our lime. So just half of the lime. Now don't squeeze too hard, unless you want lime pulp in your sauce, and that's not sexy. That is not sexy. Okay. I'm liking the consistency. We're going to taste to see where we're at. Yeah, layer upon layer upon layer when you're cooking. That's the fun part. That's really good. I need some more spice though. I taste the ginger, I taste the lime, the coconut and the tomato, everything. Everything goes together very well. We're gonna put a little bit more salt, um, some more African spice, so. As you guys can see, I use this a lot. It's just about done. But I do have another one in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. I typically buy two. If there's a spice that I like, 
I bulk up. Like, I buy in bulk. So I reduce the heat because I don't want it to boil over. And we're gonna put our shrimp in there just like this because it's gonna cook. So we have our spice. We're gonna put a little bit more of salt and pepper because we have so much of that pomi in there and there's no salt in that pomi sauce, it allows us to control, like I said, how much salt we're putting in. So taste as you go, add according to what you like. Your food should not be salty, it should be flavorful. Gonna go ahead and blend that. Mix it up, mix it up. That is the big sauce, yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. One more taste before we add the shrimp because once the shrimp is in, it's gonna be hard to sprinkle um, spices on top of that, so. All right. So we're gonna gradually pour our shrimp in there. Now with the shrimp, I already sprinkled salt and pepper, did my own little like dry marinade, let it sit in the fridge because I wanted to make sure that the shrimp was flavorful and not just the sauce. <clears throat> so, we're just gonna let that cook on low. And then we're gonna start working on the potato and then the broccolini. Trying to see which one we should do first because honestly, they both cook rather fast. So, turn our heat on. So we have our heat on. We're gonna bring it to medium low. Because remember the broccolini is already cooked for the most part, we're just adding flavor to it. We're gonna let our shrimp go ahead and cook in the sauce. Cover it up for a little bit. We're gonna work over here on our, let's do broccolini first and then the potatoes. All right, it feels like the pan is warming up. So this time we're gonna do some olive oil. Just a little bit, because this is a non-stick pan. So the broccolini should not stick at all, hopefully. Because this pan costs some money. So the non-stick should be pretty decent. Where we need to be. All right, so four ingredients for our broccolini shallots, lemon juice, okay, and then I'm gonna put some salt and pepper, and then that's it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add our shallots. Gonna let that go ahead and cook down so it's basically gonna sweat. I'm gonna check on the shrimp. I'm gonna check on the shrimp, which as you can see is cooked. And one thing about me, I can't stand chewy shrimp. I cannot stand chewy shrimp. Shrimp is my favorite seafood, and I'm not gonna mess this up 
by leaving it on the heat for too long. So the sauce is already to the consistency that I want. We're gonna go ahead and sprinkle our basil. And turn the heat off, all right? Nothing go to waste. Nothing to waste. Now, you don't have to go ahead and eat this with the broccolini and eat it with potatoes. Me, I just didn't want to eat rice, but looking at this sauce, it would be really good with some white coconut rice. Like, that would be awesome. So our shallots are warming up. And now we're gonna add the broccolini. Literally, sprinkle salt. <laughs> sprinkle pepper. Toss it up. And drizzle some lime. Lemon. I'm Haitian, y'all. Lemon, lime, they're all the same. Bring the heat down. I recently saw this Instagram meme that said, when I cook and I taste my food, I say, ooh, I'm a wife. <laughs> I'm a wife, y'all. <laughs> this is done, we're gonna put it to the side. And I'm not going to cover it because if you cover greens, they turn dark and it's no longer bright and beautiful. So we're just going to put it to the side and cook our potatoes. Alrighty, so since the broccolini is done, we're going to go ahead and make our potatoes. Four ingredients, minus the oil. Salt, pepper, garlic, rosemary. That's it. So our pan is warm. Literally, just drizzle a little bit. Olive oil. And then you want to warm up your minced garlic. And 
though. Pepper. I'm gonna just mix it up because I'm trying to brown the potatoes a little bit. Get them a little crispy. And rosemary. The rosemary, though it's our it's dried powder. Rosemary is still strong, so be careful. I said be careful. Not just keep pouring. It's just that rosemary and potatoes, they go together. Like somebody tell me it's a lie. As you can see, the potatoes are already browning. I already partially cooked it. So it's already soft in the center. There's not much that needs to be done aside from adding more color if you want to. But just like that, your meal is done. Like 30 minutes. The important thing is to prep. Okay, so we have our garlic, rosemary, potatoes. We have our broccolini with some shallot and a hint of lemon juice. And the main thing of the day is the garlic, ginger, coconut, shrimp. I'm going to go ahead and plate it up. I hope you guys take some time to try this recipe, taste it the way that I made it. The good thing about cooking is that you make things to your liking. I cook one way. You may want to add some other ingredients based on your culture. Um, so go ahead and give it a try. Leave a comment. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I want to see you guys next time.